Whether you're running a full home lab, managing Docker containers, or just want a clean way to access everything you use every day, dashboards make it simple, fast, and totally customizable. In this video, we'll be looking at Dashy, an awesome self-hosted dashboard that lets you organize and access all your web apps, containers, and services in one beautiful interface. I'll walk you through how to install Dashy, set it up for your environment, and show you a few ways to make it look amazing. Let's dive in. Starting off, we're gonna to wanna to make a data set for Dashy to put all its configuration files in. Let's go to datasets on the left pane of the TrueNAS dashboard. I'm gonna click my tank and configs data set and click add data set in the top right. I'm gonna call this data set Dashy and I'm gonna leave the data set preset as generic and click save. When the warning comes up, click the return to pool list button. Now let's jump over to the apps tab on the left side. And in the top right, I wanna click discover apps. In the search bar in the middle, I wanna type in Dashy. And when I see it come up under productivity, I wanna click the box for it. Click the blue install button. Scroll down until you get to the storage configuration section where it says Dashy config storage. Under type, use the drop down and change it to host path and then select the host path we just created. Scroll all the way to the bottom and click install. In order to deploy this via dockage, go ahead and click dockage in the center pane of the apps page and click web UI. When the web UI opens, go ahead and click the compose icon in the top left and give your staff a name. Go ahead and remove all the placeholder data on the right side and go to my wiki. When you're on the wiki, go ahead and go to the search bar at the top and type in Dashy. Click the orange bar to take you to Dashy and then click the Docker Compose tab. In the Docker Compose section, click copy to grab the entire docker-compose.yaml. Go back to dockage and paste that information and then click deploy. Now that our app is running, click web UI under the application info box. And here is our dashboard. Right now, there's a lot of placeholder information in this, but I'm gonna show you how to customize it to make it unique to you. To edit anything on this page, we wanna use the pencil icon in the top right under the word config. This is the interactive editor. When I click the pencil icon, now all of these things are editable. Let's start by working with the top left here where it says Dashy, welcome to your dashboard. I'm gonna click edit page info and I'm gonna change this to servers at home. And for my description, I'm going to use my new dashboard. Scrolling down here, we can see we have some navigation links. The buttons up here for GitHub and documentation are listed right here. I'm gonna change some of these buttons. I'm gonna remove the one for documentation. I'm gonna click the minus sign to remove that. And the GitHub one, I'm gonna to change to my TrueNAS dashboard. So I've given it a name and I've given it the IP address of my TrueNAS dashboard. And I want it to open in a new tab. I'm also gonna change the footer text here. And if I want to, I can set an app logo, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna hit save. So let's look at what happened when I hit save. Now, Servers at Home is the title of this dashboard and I have a little subcategory thing right here. The footer is currently blocked because I'm in edit mode. Let's click the save to disk and move this out of the way so I can see my footer. Down here, we can see it says, this is my new dashboard. To test out my new button, I'm gonna click TrueNAS in the top right and it opens a new tab and does indeed take me to my TrueNAS dashboard. Let's close that. Now let's add our own buttons here under getting started. I'm gonna click the pencil icon again under config, and I'm actually going to remove this whole getting started block. So I'm gonna click the slider button here, and I'm gonna click remove, and I'm gonna hit okay. So now I have a blank canvas, and I'm gonna add a new section. I'm gonna call this section home lab. I'm not gonna give it an icon, but I am gonna let it sort by default. I'm gonna keep it to two rows and two columns, but you can change this to whatever you want. And we have a lot of options here. For example, we can set whether or not it starts collapsed and whether or not it's hidden for guests. I wanna leave those both blank and just hit save. Now let's add a new item to my home lab container. I'm gonna click the plus button. I'm gonna add the item text for image. I'm gonna use a description for image and I'm gonna add an icon. When it comes to adding an icon, we have the option to set a URL path, which is what I'm going to do because I think it's the easiest way to get this set up. I recommend you jump over to the self-hosted slash icons page and then use the icons here for your dashboard. So in this case, I'm gonna search for image. And we can see here, this is the image logo. I'm gonna right click the PNG and just copy the link and jump back to Dashy and paste the link right here for the icon. For my service URL, I'm gonna type in the location of my local image instance. For the opening method, I'm gonna to set to a new tab. And we have some more options here for things like display data, hotkeys, tags. You guys can click and add as many as you want. So for example, I wanna edit a tag for photos like that, I can. And if I wanna remove my tag, I can just do the little garbage can icon and remove my tag. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And then I'm going to click save to disk in the bottom right. And here is my new image icon under my home lab. When I click image, I'm taken to my sign-in page. 
We also have the option, in case you don't like this, to change a lot of these colors. Right now it is set to colorful, but I can use this drop down icon and change it to default. I can change it to material dark, deep ocean, or glass. So there's a lot of options here for what this theme can look like. And when I click the color palette, I also have the ability to change the primary background. I can change the fonts. I can show all variables. We have more options here in the configurator in terms of what it looks like. On the very far right, I'm looking at the default view, but I can switch this to a minimal view if I want and just see the name of my dashboard, a filter, and my one link to image under my home lab. When I go back to the switch view and switch to default, it jumps back to the way it was before. I can make the item size bigger or smaller or change the layouts. So right now it's laid out as auto, but I can change this to full width or columns and rows. I'm gonna leave it on auto and I'm gonna change the item size to be much bigger. This way the icon for image and the subtext for image look a little bit cleaner on the screen. Let's go back into my editor and add a new section here called media. I'm not gonna give it a section icon and I'm not gonna to touch anything else here. I'm just gonna hit save. And then I'm gonna add a new item to my media collection. And I'm gonna call this radar and give it a description. For my icon, I'm gonna jump back to the self hosted dashboard and look for radar and use the PNG. Go back to my dashboard and then paste that icon path here. And for my service URL, I'll point it at radar. My opening method will be in a new tab and I'm gonna give this a tag of movies. Then I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna click save to disk in the bottom right. By going to my config section on the top right and clicking the wrench instead of the pencil, I'm shown some of the more advanced configuration options. So you can view and export your config and edit it, but there's also the ability here to do things like edit custom CSS. So if you wanted to change the way this page looked at a code level, you can go ahead and paste your custom CSS here up to your base theme and change all of those things. And when I click the show all variables, we can see the expanded section here gives us way more options on what the dashboard is gonna look like depending on what part of the dashboard I'm interacting with. I also have the option to do a cloud backup and restore if you wanna do that. And we can edit the config down at the code level by clicking the edit config tab here and expanding some of these things to show just how many options there are here. This has been a quick overview of Dashy. There's a lot of customization options and I wanna show you guys something really fast. When we click on GitHub in Dashy.to, and we're shown the GitHub page, we can scroll down here and they have a section for user showcase. I recommend you go ahead and jump to the user showcase. I'm gonna include this link in the video description and just take a look at some of the dashboards that are out here. There's quite a few examples of some user dashboards that are definitely really unique and show you the wide variety of options you have to make this very customizable compared to what I just showed you today, which is a really good introduction, but there are many, many more options here that have been made by the community. And these are some really great examples that I just wanted to show you. Thank you to everybody in the Discord server who voted for this video. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and jump on our Discord server because every single weekend we have a weekly vote where we vote on Wednesday's video. Thanks so much for watching this video on Dashy. If you like this video, give it a like by clicking the thumbs up below. Let me know what you think of Dashy by leaving a comment. And if you want to have a longer conversation about this video or the Dashy app, jump on our Discord server using the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.